You know, there are great stories in the Bible that are told about women who, who wanted and prayed for a child. And for years and years they prayed and went to the Lord. And those children that were born to those mothers who waited and wanted and prayed, they were children who the Bible describes how they went, to do, went on to do great things in the kingdom of God. And here in Spirit of Life, in the last couple of years, we've had three such children where doctors said they would never have children, where, where the situation was waiting and there was, there was no pregnancy or there were miscarriage after miscarriage after miscarriage. And God turned those around with a blessing and gave lives to each of those moms and dads. And we're here today to celebrate one of those, and that's Isabel Marie. And we are so thankful today that, that uh, after we were so excited that she came, that today we're excited that she's come into God's house to be received as his daughter through faith and through baptism. Of course, there's a story, and, uh, and uh, Galen asked me if it would be possible for him to tell a little bit about that story for you today. I'm going to hand her to Mama here. Yes. Yeah, we, um, it is a bit of a story, and it's part of our journey, and it's part of our testimony. I think it's an important part of what we do here at church is that we share our story. You know, we believe that we want a personal relationship with God, and that's something that really transforms our life, that God knows not only your deepest hopes, your deepest dreams, but all your fears and all your hesitations and your anxiety, that God is really there with you that whole time. And no matter how dark it looks or like things aren't going to happen, God always has a plan and has this perfect sense of timing. You know, for us, it was way longer than we ever thought. And it's hard to kind of deal with that. And I'm sure that maybe this isn't your exact situation, but maybe you've experienced something like this where it, it seems to be happening for others, but never you, right? Um, where it just kind of grates on you after a while, right? You're kind of like, oh, okay. And then you kind of just start thinking like, maybe God's just, Maybe this is really not in the plan for me. You know, I felt like God had promised me something here. And it kind of felt like it wasn't there. And the thing is that there's signs along the way. And I think a lot about the rainbow. You think about the rainbow, it's like, you know, Noah's Ark, right? The rainbow is a promise. And we sang this song called The Blessing, right? And that's based on the story of Abraham and this blessing that he would, God would give Abraham children even in old age. And how many times God had to renew that covenant. But the thing is, is that every time God comes to renew that covenant, it's because the promise is in danger. And so what I want to say is, I want you to take heart because there are signs along the way that God still has that promise for you. We need to rest and celebrate in the promises of God because God has plans for us. He has a perfect sense of timing. It's not what we would imagine. It never looked like what we thought it would. Certainly, we didn't imagine having a child during the COVID time that we're in with so much chaos in the world. But here's the thing. No matter how dark and grim it looks in the world, and let's face it, a lot of people are really not too um, optimistic about the state of our world right now. No matter how dark it looks and no matter how much it looks like those promises are not going to happen, God is sending sign after sign and hope after hope, and we can rest in those promises and in that hope. And so for us, I think of signs like the rainbow, those covenants that God says, you know, the promise is not in danger. Don't worry. I'm still coming. I still have a plan, and I have special plans for y'all. And so I just wanted to share that word because I've been on all sides of this, right? I've, I've been watching other people who had a kid, right? And so maybe that's where you are today. And I think that's really important to acknowledge that God has different plans for every single person. But what you have to know is he has a plan for you and your story. And there's hope. And so I, my message is just to rest in the promises of God and what he's promised for you. Celebrate that in the darkest times because you have no idea what he can really do for you. Jesus, his last words to his disciples before he ascended into heaven, he said, all authority on heaven and earth has been given to me. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things which I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you to the very end of the age. He also said, this promise is for you and your children. We remember the day when parents were, were bringing their children to Jesus and the disciples said, give Jesus a break. I mean, the, you know, get, get the kids away from Jesus. And the scripture says that Jesus was indignant. He was indignant and he said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. Today we are here to do as Jesus says, and that is to baptize. And we are here to baptize Isabel because God has chosen this time for her to be born, this time for her to become her child in God's kingdom, and also chose her for this time that is ahead. And so we, we, we honor what God has given us today in Isabel. There we are. There we go. We have waited a long time for you to come. And this is a very special day, and we want to pray for you. Dear Isabel, we bring you to Jesus here today because he's the one that has given you to us. And we thank and we praise him. And we pray today that at her baptism, Lord, that you would bless her richly, that you would fill her with your Holy Spirit, that you would begin the process of unfolding the great plans that you have for her in her life. And Lord, may we believe in those plans. And may we look at Isabel with all of the expectancy of the things that you are going to do in her life. That we raise her to know you. That we, that we fill her with words of affirmation and hope about how special she is and how, and how you have plans for her. And Lord, we ask for your blessing to be upon her in all ways and in all times. And may you accomplish your plans in her. In Jesus' name, amen. Christy and Leo, you are your Isabel's godparents. And what that means is that, is that you are joining with, with Galen and Claudia to raise her to realize the full potential that God has for her in her life. That you are a spiritual influence on her, encouraging her in all that she has in front of her, in all that the Lord has planned for her. Because you unite your prayers with Galen and Claudia's prayers and all of ours, because we know that this gift and this little girl is special in the kingdom of God, and God has great plans for you, little girl. So today we baptize you. Ah. Isabel Marie Miller, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Ah. Lord, receive her into your kingdom. She is your child, and we pray, Lord, your blessing upon her for all the days of her life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>